So what I have here is an expression. Square root of eight minus square root of 32. Sure, I can evaluate this using the calculator, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come up with a vertical expression as a solution. So I can write 32 as eight times four. I can split the second term as square root of eight times square root of four. Now you can see that we have a common term, a common factor, and this is the crucial part when you add or subtract radicals. Pulling out the common factor, um, going back to factoring polynomials, similar approach, we want to express the radical expression in terms of factors. So, I have root eight in common. If I pull that out, I'll have one in the first term minus root four in the second term. Square root of eight, one minus the square root of four is two. So square root of eight times one minus one, excuse me, one minus two is minus one. I'll have minus square root of eight. You may leave the answer as is, but in this problem, I can take it one step further and simplify. I can write square root of eight as square root of four times two. Square root of four times square root of two. Square root of four is simply two. So you would have negative two root two as the final answer. We can write 27 as nine times three which we can apply the square root to and 75 as 25 times three. Split the roots, square root of nine times square root of three minus square root of 25 times square root of three. Square root of nine is simply three. So I have three root three. Square root of 25 is five. So I have five root three. Root three is in common between the two terms. So if I pull root three out, I would have three minus five. Three minus five is simply negative two. So we have negative two root three. So, we simply have to factor out common terms in adding radicals. So I could write this expression as three square root of two times square root of x cubed plus four x 
multiplied by square root of eight times square root of x. Three, can't do anything about that square root of two, so I'm going to leave that as is. Multiplied by x cubed, I can write that as x squared times x. In a similar manner, I could write eight as four times two, multiplied by square root of x. So three square root of two, square root of x squared, square root of x, plus four x multiplied by square root of four, square root of two, multiplied by square root of x. Three, square root of two. The square root of x squared will simply reduce to x, multiplied by root x. Square root of four is simply two, multiplied by square root of two times square root of x. I can multiply the four x and two, which would give me eight x. I can multiply the three and x, which will give me three x. So three x. I have two roots that are in product, so I can simply put them together. Same logic with the next term, 4x times 2, 8x, multiplied by square root of 2x. We now have square root of 2x in common. So if I factor it out, in the first term, I would have 3x. In the second one, I would have 8x. So 8x plus 3x, 11x, multiplied by square root of 2x. Here we have a similar problem. So three, split the roots, square root of 45, square root of x cubed, plus x, square root of 5x. Nothing can be done about the 5x five, five inside the root in the second term. So I will just leave it as is. I am going to try and write 45 in terms of squares. So nine times five, x cubed, x squared times x, plus x multiplied by square root of five x. We can split nine times five root as root nine times root five. Same here, square root of x squared, square root of x. Square root of nine is simply three. So three multiplied by three. Square root of x squared is x multiplied by square root of x. The second term is simply x square root of x. Three times three is nine, and then I have an x. So 
I can write it as 9x. Nothing can be done about the root 5 and root x, but they are multiplied, so I can combine them and write it as square root of 5x. Now I have square root of 5x in common. If I pull that out, I would simply have square root of 5x multiplied by 9x plus x. Which would give us 10x multiplied by square root of 5, excuse me, 5x. Now, what if we had three terms? For instance, I have two square root of 50 minus three square root of 125 plus square root of 98. The process is pretty much the same. So we'll have to, well, you split and write that 50 in terms of a perfect square, if at all possible. 50, I can write it as 25 times two. 125, I can write it as 25 times five. 98, I can write it as 49 times 2. Now I can split the roots. So 2 <clears throat> multiplied by square root of 25, multiplied by square root of 2, minus 3 square root of 25, multiplied by square root of 5, plus square root of 49 multiplied by square root of two. Two, square root of 25 is five, square root of two, minus three, square root of 25 is five, times square root of five, square root of 49 is seven, square root of two. So we would end up having 10 square root of two minus 15 square root of five plus seven square root of two. We can combine this term and that term, 10 square root of two plus seven square root of two would be 17 square root of two. I will explicitly write it out so you can see why. If I pull square root of two out, I'll have 10 plus seven. So 17 square root of two minus 15 square root of five. And that would be the final answer. So four, I could write 32 as 16 times two. I could write 18 as nine times two. I could write 128 as 64 times two. Now I could split the roots four times square root of 16 times square root of two minus square root of nine times square root of two plus two times square root of 64 times square root of two. Square root of 16 is four. 
square root of nine is three. So we have three root two plus two square root of 64 is eight. Four times four, 16 root two minus three root two plus 16 root two. 16 plus 16 is 32 root two minus three root two from the second term. We have a root two in common, root two multiplied by 32 minus three, which will give us 29 square root of two. So we split the root square root of b, nine times square root of b cubed, square root of 25 times square root of b cubed, square root of 49 times square root of b cubed, root nine is three. I can split b cubed Instead of splitting each and every time, I'm going to take a different approach because that term, that term, that term, they're all the same. So I'm going to keep them as is for now. Three square root of B cubed minus square root of 25 is five. So five square root of B cubed. Square root of 49, is seven, seven square root of B cubed. The B cubed, they are in common. So if I pull that out, I'll have three minus five plus seven. So square root of B cubed, Seven plus three, 10, 10 minus five, five. So I will simply have five square root of B cubed. Now, now that I have square root of B cubed, I can go ahead and simplify. I can write B cubed as B squared times B. I can split the root as square root of b squared times square root of b. The root and the square will get cancelled. Five times b is five b multiplied by square root of b. Let's consider square root of five minus square root of seven squared going to start with numbers so that you, we understand the concept and we could go from there. So if that is A and that is B, we know A minus B squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2AB, which would mean a is square root of five, B is square root of seven. So A squared, square root of five squared, plus B squared, square root of seven squared, minus two AB, two multiplied by five, multiplied by seven. the root and the square will get cancelled. So we would end up having five plus seven minus two. Nothing could be done about five and seven because they are odd numbers. So we can put them together and write it as square root of 35. 
7 plus 5 is 12. So we have 12 minus 2 square root of 35. Sure, we can leave it as is, but I see a common factor between 12 and 2, which simply is 2. So if I pull 2 out, I would have 6 minus square root of 35. So I can write that using the identity a minus b squared, which is simply a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Square root of 3 squared. minus 2 times a times b plus b squared, which is square root of 11 squared. The root and the power will get cancelled. We'd end up having 3 minus 2 square root of 33 plus 11. 11 plus 3 is 14. So 14 minus 2 square root of 33. We have a 2 in common. So if I pull 2 out, I would have 2 multiplied by 7 minus square root of 33. So here we have square root of x plus square root of 2y multiplied by square root of x plus square root of y. I can simply do FOIL square root of x times square root of x, square root of x times square root of y plus square root of 2y times square root of x plus square root of 2y times square root of x. Now, what would happen if I bump the x's together? In the previous section, we tried to split a radical. Here, since we are multiplying and adding stuff, we'll have to put the radicals together to see if the expression is getting simplified. So I can write it as square root of x squared, square root of x times square root of y, square root of xy. Bump those two together, I'll have square root of two multiplied by xy, and lastly, square root of 2, y squared. The root and the square will get cancelled. So, oops, x plus square root of xy, I'm going to split the root as square root of 2 multiplied by square root of x, y. Because if I did that, I would have a common factor of square root of x, y. Plus square root of 2, y squared, split it as square root of 2 times square root of y squared the root and the square will get cancelled. So x plus, if I pull the square root of xy out, I'll have 1 plus root 2, last term, square root of 2 times y. That is the best that we can do.
with this problem. Um, but there are other problems where when we combine terms, things would get simplified. Now, the key to this problem or the objective of this problem is to recognize that we multiply, we will have to combine the terms so that, or combine the radicals so that the root and the square might get canceled, which is why I combined those two terms and even those terms. So once you combine and simplify, you can split further to see um, if other terms will get simplified. So the process is pretty straightforward. We just foil. And the first term, square root of x times square root of x, square root of x times three, two times square root of x, two times three, six. If I combine the two together in the first term, the two radicals, I'll have square root of x times x plus three square root of x plus two square root of x plus six. Square root of x squared plus five square root of x plus six. The root and the square will get canceled. So we have x plus five square root of x plus six. And that would be the final answer. So we can foil square root of x times square root of x minus square root of x times square root of y plus square root of y times square root of x minus square root of y times square root of y. Combine the roots. Square root of x squared minus square root of xy plus square root of y times x is the same as x times y minus square root of y squared. The root and the square will get cancelled. Those two terms will get cancelled. So we would simply have x minus y. This is one way of doing the problem. But if you pay attention, we have sort of identical terms. So a plus b, a minus b. And our special identity tells us a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared. Square root of x squared minus square root of y squared. The root and the power would get cancelled. So we would end up having x minus y. Square root of three plus x squared is simply square root of three plus x multiplied by square root of three plus x. Square root of three times square root of three is square root of three squared plus square root of three times x square root of three multiplied by x plus x multiplied by square root of three plus x times x, x squared. Square root of three squared is three plus the middle two terms are the same, x square root of three. So we would end up having two x square root of three plus x squared. <laughs> 